This video will cover the topic, inferring properties of a polynomial function from its graph. Just by looking at a graph, we can know certain properties of a function, such as when it is increasing or decreasing, where its local maxima and minima occur, the sign of the leading coefficient, and possible degrees of the function. Say we are given a graph that looks like this. Based on the graph of f, we will solve these four questions. The function f is increasing over which intervals? The function f has local maxima at which x values? What is the sign of the leading coefficient of f? Which of the following is a possibility for the degree of f? So look at the first question. How can we tell if the graph is increasing or decreasing? Great question. A function is increasing over an interval if the y-coordinates of the points on a graph get bigger from left to right. When this happens, the graph looks like it is rising as the x-coordinates increase. A function is decreasing over an interval if the y-coordinates of the points on the graph get smaller from left to right. When this happens, the graph looks like it's falling as the x-coordinates increase. A function can also be constant, and this happens over an interval where the graph stays the same height. Our question is looking for where the function is increasing. Let's look through our given points and determine which intervals are correct. From negative infinity to negative 4, the graph appears to be rising. This tells us that it's increasing. Next, from negative 4 to 1, the graph looks like it's falling, which means that it's decreasing. From 1 to 6, the graph once again appears to be rising, which tells us that it's increasing again. And from 6 to infinity, the graph looks like it's falling, so it's decreasing for the rest of the way. Overall, our intervals for the where the function is increasing are negative infinity to negative 4 and 1 to 6. Why do we write our intervals with parentheses instead of brackets? At the points identified on the graph, the function is neither increasing nor decreasing. Rather, these are the points where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa. We can't include these points in the interval, and we must indicate this with parentheses. Let's move on to part B, in which we find the local maxima. What are maxima, and how would we find them? Local extrema occur where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing, or from decreasing to increasing. A function has a local maximum at an x value where the graph shifts from increasing to decreasing. A function has a local minimum at an x value where the graph shifts from decreasing to increasing. Our question asks us to find the x values where the function has local maxima so if we look at our graph, we can identify points where the graph transitions from increasing to decreasing. Both negative 4 and 6 fit our criteria since the graph increases before negative 4 and decreases after negative 4, and the graph increases before 6 and decreases after 6. This tells us that our answer is x equals negative 4 and 6. Next, we have question C, which deals with finding the sign of the leading coefficient of f. This one has to be difficult. How do you even find the sign of a leading coefficient of a function based only on its graph? We can do this by looking at the shape of the graph. Let's take a look at the graphs of y equals x squared, y equals negative x squared, y equals x cubed, and y equals negative x cubed. Let's take a look at y equals x squared and y equals negative x squared first. Looking at these two example graphs, we see that if the degree of the function is even and the leading coefficient is positive, then both ends of the graph are pointing upwards. We can also see that if the degree of the function is even and the leading coefficient is negative, then both ends of the graph are pointing down. If you would like to see more examples of this, you could also compare the graphs of y equals x to the 4th and y equals negative x to the 4th, and also y equals x to the 6th and y equals negative x to the 6th. Let's now look at y equals x cubed and y equals negative x cubed. Looking at these two example graphs, we see that if the degree of the function is odd and the leading coefficient is positive, then the left end points down and the right end points up. 
the degree of the function is odd and the leading coefficient is negative, then the left end points up and the right end points down. If you would like to see more examples of this, you could also compare the graphs of y equals x to the fifth and y equals negative x to the fifth, and also y equals x to the seventh and y equals negative x to the seventh. In summary, we can see that if the degree of the function is even, then both ends of the graph will point in the same direction, upward if the leading coefficient is positive, downward if the leading coefficient is negative. We can also see that if the degree of the function is odd, then the ends of the graph will point in opposite directions, left end down and right end up if the leading coefficient is positive, or left end up and right end down if the leading coefficient is negative. Just as a reminder, we are not labeling these functions as even or odd because that would refer to the symmetry of the function. Keep in mind that when we say the degree of a function is even, it is not the same as saying that a function is even. And when we say that the degree of a function is odd, it is not the same as saying that a function is odd. If this is unfamiliar to you, please review the even and odd functions topic. The observations we made about which direction either end of the function points, up or down, is called the end behavior of the graph. These end behavior rules will hold true for any polynomial, no matter how large the exponent. So how can we apply this to the graph we have? Let's take a look. As we can see, both the left and the right end are pointing downward. If we remember our rules, the fact that both ends are facing the same direction tells us the degree of the polynomial shown on the graph is even. Also, since both ends are facing downward, this tells us the leading coefficient is negative. That part about the degree of the function being even ties into the next question, right? I know that the degree of the function must be even, so it can be 5, 7, or 9 because those are odd numbers, but how do I know which even numbers the degree could be? Well, we start off by looking at our number of extrema. As we can see, our graph has three of them. That's three places where the graph transitions between increasing and decreasing. A rule of polynomial functions is that the degree of a function is at least one greater than its number of local extrema. Knowing that we have three local extrema and the degree has to be at least one greater than this number, we know that the degree of the function must be at least four. Now we know that the possible degree of the function f can be any even number greater than or equal to four, so based on our options, it could be four, six, or eight. That makes sense, but there was a lot of information in this topic. Let me make sure I understand it all. To determine if the function is increasing or decreasing, we look to see where the graph appears to be rising and falling. To determine where the local extrema are, we identify at what points the graph transitions between increasing and decreasing. To determine the sign of the leading coefficient of the function, we examine the end behavior of the graph. We can also use the end behavior to determine if the degree of the function is odd or even, and from there we can decide possible degrees of the function based on the number of local extrema. Great job remembering all those steps.